All right, so I'm going to be talking about thermoregulation in penguins. We've already learned about some standard thermoregulatory adaptations and behaviors found in penguins, so I'll focus on more specific thermoregulatory adaptations, specifically during the breeding season when the energy requirement is high. To begin, let's go over some of the typical behaviors and adaptations we associate with penguins. First, there are two main methods that polar animals use to survive in their harsh environments, blubber or fat, and fur or down. When I started research for this, I was curious to understand how blubber acts as an insulator. While I did learn that it's highly vascularized, I also learned that this fat is not the major insulator for penguins. Penguins rely primarily on their body coverings for insulation. Their feathers are good at insulation because they are very small and tightly overlap each other. You can see this in this picture. Also, they have down at the part of the feather closest to their bodies, and the tip is waterproof and oily. The feathers are so good at insulation that when researchers measure the temperature of the surface of the feathers, it is cool. The feathers allow very little heat to escape from the body to the surface. Moving on, penguins also huddle close together for extra heat. Some researchers believe that this is not truly altruistic, but rather a more selfish behavior that as a result benefits the group as a whole. Regardless, their body heat is able to elevate the temperature of the air within the huddle, allowing them to reduce their metabolic rate and energy use. This behavior is often seen during the breeding season when males are protecting their eggs or chicks. Because this is a particularly energy exhausting time for the male penguins, with winter temperatures, fasting, and protecting their offspring, scientists believe that the high energy requirement for thermoregulation, about 85% of energy resources, would, in the absence of huddling, probably exceed the total energy. Finally, the penguins will also hold a position similar to a tripod, where they lift their feet off the ice and steady themselves with their heels and tail tip. As you can see, their feet do not have the insulated feathers, so it is a surface where they can lose a lot of heat. Therefore, this method helps the penguins decrease the surface area touching the cold ice, especially the uninsulated feet. Next, we'll look at the humeral arterial plexus. By breaking down the name, we can determine that this is located on the humerus bone, involves arteries, and is a system of vessels. The humeral arterial plexus is a vascular countercurrent heat exchange. If you remember, in class we talked about a countercurrent heat exchange in the legs of horses, and this is a similar concept. The purpose of this countercurrent heat exchange is to allow penguins to look for food for longer durations in the cold waters by limiting heat loss through the flippers. Looking at the image, you can see the brachial artery splits into three to five major vessels and then join once again at the humor radius, humerus radius joint. For each humeral artery, there are two or more veins, here represented by blue, which form the plexus. The warm arterial blood flows through the flipper, transferring heat to the walls of the vesicles through convection. Then these walls transfer heat to the venous blood through conduction. This helps heat remain conserved in the body core. Tests have been conducted showing that due to this mechanism, there is a 30 degrees Celsius internal temperature difference between the shoulders and the wingtips of penguins. At the top of the picture, you can also see a, the structure's osteological correlate, the humeral arterial sulcus. This was used by researchers to trace the presence of the humeral arterial plexus in penguin fossils. All right, so as I mentioned, thermoregulation needed in penguins is most evident in the male penguin during breeding season. Emperor penguins breed during the cold Antarctic winter. The males will remain on land, incubating an egg for up to four months. During this period, they will lose about 20 kilograms of their body mass, in the case of an emperor penguin. Since this is such a harsh environment, they will use behavioral methods such as huddling and tripoding to prevent loss of heat. But how do they manage to keep the egg or chick warm? Penguins have a flap of naked skin on their abdomens called the brood patch or pouch. You can see that here in the photo. The egg or chick is positioned on the adult's feet, pressing up against the brood patch. Then penguins have a fold of belly plumage that cover, comes down to insulate the offspring. Direct contact with the skin 
enables heating through the blood vessels, which is conduction, plus the skin of the brood patch has temperature sensing neurons that pick up the temperature of the egg. So the adult knows if it's the right temperature or if it's too cold and they need to do other methods to warm it up. However, once the chick has hatched, it needs to work on its own thermoregulatory mechanisms. So let's take a look at the ontogeny of thermoregulatory mechanisms in penguin chicks. Ontogeny is the origination or development of an organism. In a study performed on king penguin chicks in the sub-Antarctic area, maturation of thermoregulatory mechanisms was analyzed. Full eman emancipation for king penguin chicks was observed at one month of age. The following chart here depicts the measured thermoregulatory mechanisms in associated chick age. So in the newly hatched chick, there was observed regulatory thermogenesis, which was a 21% increase in heat production. However, the chick rapidly became hypothermic because they weren't able to sustain this heat production. In two to three day old chicks, there was observed 32% increase in resting metabolic rate and a 52% increase in peak metabolic rate. This shows a really nice increase in the thermoregulatory mechanisms. Finally, at one week, there's a whopping two-fold rise in the thermogenic capacity. And at two to three weeks old, close to the emancipation age, you'll see a two-fold increase in the thermal insulation that's coupled with a reduction in the resting heat production, which if you think that makes sense, because when you're able to insulate yourself better, you don't have to work as hard to produce heat. Based on this, researchers concluded that both insulative and metabolic adaptations are required for ontogeny of thermoregulation in the penguin chicks. Furthermore, the results indicate that thermogenic processes are sufficiently matured prior to the improvement of thermal insulation. In summary, due to their environment, penguins have many thermoregulatory mechanisms to keep themselves and their offspring warm. Once the offspring hatch, it is important that they have rapid ontogeny of their thermoregulatory mechanisms. These are my sources. Thank you for listening.